Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to show my fully installed APR carbon fiber front splitter for the S209. Now, as I mentioned in my previous video, I installed the Varus rear diffuser and I really wanted to balance out the aerodynamics of this car. Um, since, you know, installing a rear diffuser shifts the um, center of pressure to rearward, you kind of want to bring it back closer to the center of gravity, which is, you know, frontward. And in order to do that, you need to install a front splitter. Not only that, but a front splitter and a rear diffuser work really well together. And so I thought it was beneficial to have both of these pieces to really complete the aerodynamics of this car. So I decided not to film the full install of the carbon fiber front splitter, mostly because it was a long painstaking process. APR ends up sending you this full front splitter, which is, if you look underneath, like fully functional, it covers the full um, kind of like under tray area. And so you need to drill your own holes and make it work. And so I had to mock up um, pretty much the carbon fiber front lip against the, the bumper. And um, this specific APR front splitter works specifically with the STI lip. So APR has like three different versions of the front splitter. One that works with the lip, one without the lip, and one that works with their APR front lip. And so for this one, uh, we decided to get the front splitter that works with the STI lip. Now, one of the reasons why I chose this design is because, for one, I wanted to keep the styling of the STI lip shown here and kind of have it tucked in. And secondly, um, I wanted to get something that's fully functional, something that's lightweight, something that looks good, and that's one of the reasons I chose the APR carbon fiber front splitter. Now, one of the first modifications I did to the APR front splitter is I actually just removed the APR performance sticker that's usually shown here. Uh, personally, I don't like to have, you know, aftermarket brand names that kind of stick out in the car. It kind of looks tacky. It also shows too much logo with the STI lip as well as the APR uh, sticker. And so that's the, one of the reasons why I decided to take it off. And as you can see, I think it looks a lot more clean that way. Um, yeah, definitely looks much better without that sticker. Now, the way that I got this to work is actually I did a lot of research on how to mock up and um, set up a front splitter. And one of the uh, directions that I decided to go is to actually contact Varus Engineering and have them send me the hardware and use their mounting points in order to mount this front splitter. And so if you look underneath the car, you can see that there's uh, three mounting points here. Uh, there's three in the middle and then there's three outward. Um, and one of the things that I really like is that it actually mounts to the chassis mounting points where the under tray normally mounts. There's one there and one over there. So there's two chassis mounting points there. And then I actually referred to one of Smedia's videos where he made these brackets um, to kind of uh, chassis mount it that way on to um, that, uh, I don't know what you call this, like cross member brace. Um, and so you can kind of make up these these brackets, one that attaches to the back um, of the splitter and one that attaches to that cross member brace and do it on both sides so that you get more reinforcements on the back. So in total, uh, there's so many mounting points. There's, uh, I think, 13 mounting points in total. This thing is pretty robust. And yeah, uh, the reason I decided to do that is because personally, I don't want to run uh, so front support rods. Uh, personally, I don't like the way front support rods look, so uh, that's why I decided to keep it um, nice and clean, have a nice clean install, and make sure that this thing kind of doesn't rip off at speeds. Now, I know that this isn't perfect. I know that to really fully get the effect of a front splitter, uh, chassis mounting multiple points and having a support rod is the way to go, but for my purpose, I think that this will work pretty well. Actually, for my build, I decided um, I don't want to have the car too low. And so the way that front splitters make downforce is actually by ground effects. 
So basically the lower the car is, the more downforce you're gonna get from the front splitter. And so for me, I'm gonna keep close to the stock uh, ride height, uh, which is basically a 10 millimeter drop from like, from stock. And I think there's enough ground clearance. And what that means is that this front splitter is not gonna make so much downforce where, uh, you know, this thing could possibly break from being too low. And secondly, I also don't want this thing to break from being too low, you know, hitting curbs or whatnot. So for me personally, it's a, um, the way that I want to use it for aerodynamic purposes, I don't want it to make maximum front downforce. I want it to be something that adds style, um, something that will add some downforce, um, and something that I can use uh, on the street without worrying about hitting curbs. And so. One way to do that is just make sure that you stay stock ride height so that you have enough ground clearance to use the front splitter and it won't fully utilize the ground effect and create more downforce where this thing could potentially break. So the way I did the install is I pretty much mocked it up. I put like a box under here, set this thing straight and then measured out exactly where to drill the holes while it was kind of mocked up. Um, you kind of have to I just took a marker and from the from each mounting point kind of like um, brought it down and made a mark onto each mounting point and so uh, again there was three uh, mounting points here three on the front and three on the other side to make a total of nine as well as the two chassis mounts where the under tray would normally mount up so that's 11 plus the two that I did from uh, from the back um, referencing Smedia's video where he made these custom um, brackets in order to mount the back portion. And overall, this thing is pretty robust. I, I think that it's gonna be pretty strong. I don't think that it's gonna um, come down and potentially break under speed. Um, and I think it will be fully functional. Um, personally, I really love the look. Um, one of the reasons why I got this is because it's also fully uh, dry carbon fiber. And um, I wanted something to match the Varus rear diffuser. And so I think overall, um, I've kind of achieved what I wanted for this kind of styling. I hope that this is gonna work really well aerodynamically. So I know that with this front splitter, um, I'm going to be making a lot more front downforce. Front splitters are probably the easiest way to make front downforce and so um, I'm probably going to have to do some tweaking in terms of how I adjust the rear because I want the overall um, center of pressure to be kind of the way that STI set it up for a factory. And so since I have a lot more front downforce from the APR front splitter, I think that I'm going to have to adjust the mounting position of this rear wing. Pretty much I'm going to have to bring this up um, and that's going to give me a lot more um, rear downforce um, since the angle of attack on the rear wing is going to be uh, much higher. So with the um, higher angle of attack from the wing as well as from the rear diffuser from uh, Varus, if you can see that. So I think that with these two adjustments um, from the rear uh, the aerodynamic balance, the center of pressure should be pretty much where it was in the beginning and I should get a lot more front and rear grip while I'm at the track. Now in terms of street driving, um, I do realize that if I put that rear wing up and if I, now, now that I have this front splitter, I do expect to get a lot more drag and so maybe my MPGs or other things might not feel as good on the street. but. Since uh, this car is, you know, my primary focus is to run it well on the track, I think these aerodynamic parts are going to help improve lap times. So in terms of styling, one of the reasons why I picked the APR front splitter is because it was designed to work specifically with the OEM STI lip. Um, I really love how the lines flow really well with the canards that comes standard on the S209, as well as this portion of the 2018 plus STI lip, um, you can see that it's kind of molded to follow that same styling. And you can see that it kind of 
follows the lines perfectly. Like this sharp edge, you, you kind of see that it's molded similarly to that, as well as on the other side. So um, really, it was, there's really no downside to running something like this. Um, I think overall, the styling's really good, uh, should provide a lot of front end downforce, and overall, just, yeah, just looks really good, looks really clean. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys like the content, feel free to like, subscribe, and let me know what you guys think about the APR uh, performance front splitter. Personally, I think that this is the best front splitter on the market in terms of styling, um, functionality, and performance, and giving you as much you know, front downforce as you can get by having the most frontal area out of a, you know, an aftermarket um, splitter. And the fact that it's made from dry carbon fiber, you know that you're getting the best materials. Um, so in terms of styling, looks, performance, functionality, uh, APR really kind of hits all those points really well. The only knock that I would give it is the fact that there's no real installation process for this. Um, you really have to do your own custom mounting or get it professionally mounted. So for me personally, I did a lot of research. I decided to use the Varus mounting points, which are the nine mounting points, plus the two for the under tray, and then two um, that I did in the rear. And I think that this thing's very stout. I think that it's gonna hold up. I'll give you guys an update if I do have any issues with it, but I think that it should work well, especially since I do plan on running at stock ride height or close to it. So the next thing I'm gonna do is uh, install new coilovers and that allows me to adjust ride height. But in my case, I wanna stay a bit higher so that I don't actually destroy the front splitter. And also, um, you know, I need ground clearance for street driving. So, um, yeah, look forward to that video. Thanks again. Hope to see you again soon.